But let's get to your bets of the week. It's why we're here. Bears bets for the National Football League. I'm here to talk to you. We're here to get your your bets, though. It's bear bets, right? That's why we're here. Uh, the first one of the week will be the Commanders at the Broncos. Broncos favored by three and a half here. The total is 39. The Commanders, we know, barely beat Arizona in week one. They failed to cover as well. And the Broncos lost by one to the Las Vegas Raiders. Who do you got here? All, all the excitement about Sean Payton and the redemption story of Russell Wilson. You come out and you, you miss an extra point and you lose to the, the Raiders. At, at home. That's a very, that was a very like New York Raiders. Yeah, that, was like a, that, was my, that was my tribute to Chris Berman. <laughs> uh, I like it. Yeah. NFL primetime right, right, Raiders type deal. But, but look, look at Washington. Like they did everything that they could to give Arizona that game. Yeah. And Arizona was like, no, no, you, 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 you take it. We're going to do something even, even stupider. So I have no, no faith in this, in this Washington team. And now you're going on the road and you're facing Denver, who is in that group of 0-1 teams, a team that had some expectations. Like, you would just assume that just defensively they'll be able to slow down Sam Howell and that offense. McLaurin's still not 100%. If you get – I'm not one of these guys who thinks Russell Wilson's going to totally become the Russell Wilson that he's been. I think he's been on the downward arc of his career for a couple of years now. But I would just think that at home now, you're laying three and a half, which I'm, I'm okay with that, that the Broncos are, are, are the right side. Because 0-2 here would be an absolute disaster. And if they go to 0-2, it could send their season in an absolute downward spiral. You bet on Russell Wilson laying three and a half. Good for you, buddy. <laughs> Good for you. Good not with, for you, not with the not with the Legion uh, of Boom either. A, a, lot, a lot of faith there. The under thirty nine feels applicable here, right? I mean, you have a, a Washington offensive struggle last week against Arizona. Sam Howell goes on the road to, to face a Denver team that we know their defense is good, obviously, right? I mean, they've they've had to be good for now this entire Russell Wilson period. But Russell Wilson, if you pull up a stat line from this game to the last time they played the Raiders last season, it's the exact same, same stat thing. line. Exact same stat line. We saw. Um, you know, that that his inability, again, to just get in a great rhythm at times. He did throw the ball better on the run, but as the game got longer, got hit a little bit more, he kind of crumbled back to what we saw last <laughs> season. And my concern here is that Washington defense is really good. They're really good. And so, um, yeah, but this, this could be a 17-10 to 10 win for the Broncos, though, right? I mean, they, I'll take they, it. Like, yeah, on, on, yes, I'll take, take it. it. Let's get to uh, Bears' second game here. And the Chicago Bears – at the Tampa Bay Bucks, the Bucks are favored by three. The total is 40 and a half. The Bears off a pretty big home loss to the Packers, who they, they never beat. Um, and the Bucks, a surprising week one winner. There were seven point dogs early in the week. I think that, that number changed by kickoff. Uh, they beat the Vikings last week in this game, is in Tampa Bay. Bears getting the three points. Who you got, Bear? I can't lay three points with Tampa. Like, like, that was one of those. You, you look at the box score of the Bucks win yeah. in, in, in Minnesota. Average three and a half yards a play. We're outgained by 130 yards, plus three in turnovers. Like, are they going to get a, a three over turnover, three, three nothing turnover edge again? Maybe it is Justin Fields and a bad Bears, a bad, bad Bears team, but you can't rely on that stuff each week. I, I think it was just more of a meltdown by the Vikings than anything else. No, nothing that Tampa did offensively yeah. tells me I want to lay points with this team. So this might be one of those kind of opportunities to buy low and I would say buy low, but kind of go against the team that might be a little overvalued on the line right now because they are one and oh and the Bears are the Bears are 0 and one. I would just think as long as Chicago doesn't turn the ball over, I would think that maybe feet they can get a little bit more running usage running the ball from from fields and maybe the the run game itself can 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 do a little bit better. But I I'll I'll take the Bears at plus three here. I think anytime you can fade Baker Mayfield, it's a, it's a good option. And he's the favorite at home in this game. And, you know, the reason why there's a lot of value here is it's, I think that we both agree the Vikings were a little overvalued in week one. Yes. And so when they. You, we, you mean you're not going to go like 11 and 1 in no. one score games it every was, year? They were, they were 10 and 0 in the regular season last season, yeah. one score games. The one they lost was the playoff game. They were 10 and 1. Obviously, and, and we talk about this all the time. People don't understand, I think, why we put a lot of value into this because the historical data has shown up. If you win a lot of close games one year, the next year, you don't win as many close right. games. They were 10-0 in one score Simple games. math. Uh, and so, obviously, this season, we'll get to the Vikings, maybe another show. But nonetheless <laughs> here, anytime you, you can fade Baker Mayfield, I'm, I'm all for that. The one concern I have personally about the Bears is, I think their offense is pretty stinky. And is there a time to admit 
that Justin Fields might not be the guy. He started, I think, 26 games now. Like, we, we, like is, is that time going to happen at some point? I think back to draft night that year, and people are like, how is he sliding? How is he sliding? And and then when he gets picked, ultimately where he got put, picked by the Bears, oh, what a great pick. Hey, I, I'd love like to go back and like pull the historical data of the unanimous consensus. What a great pick. Because I have a feeling a lot of those what a great picks don't, out, don't turn out to be great picks at all. But yeah, it, it, so if, if they do go on the low yeah. road, road and lose to Tampa, I mean, there are places out there in, in the global market where you can wager on first coach to be fired like is, is ever like in year two probably not after that after two losses early in the season but if you get to week 10 and they're two and eight and fields isn't any better certainly yes well that, that's the thing i think that's kind of wh- wh- where i was going with it as well like someone's going to take the fall and someone's going to take the heat for this and yeah. gonna, is it going to be like where you need to look somewhere else for our court like quarterback or is it going to be the head coach i mean I mean, there are, there are like, but if he fields is such a great athlete, like would, I don't think you're going to be like, Oh, we're going to, we're going to move you to wide receiver. No, no, tight he's, end no. Or, he's a quarterback. I mean, you hope my guess is they would do what a lot of these teams do is you hire Ben Johnson, the Lions OC, and who's done a great job with Jared Goff. And he, you hire him as your head coach and you say, look, man, fix Justin Fields for us. You know, right. Brian Dable hired by the Giants. Fix Daniel Jones. Right. Like, that, I think, is what they're going to do if Matty Rufus isn't the guy who's, who's able to do that. And that's a great point about, about Dable, by the way, too, because look what Daniel, look what uh, Josh Allen has been since he's no longer been in Buffalo. <sighs> Not good. Not good for the New York Jets as they go to the Dallas Cowboys. New York Jets are, uh, again, nine and a half points at the Cowboys. 38 and a half is the number here, Bear. This is your third wager of the week. And, uh, <laughs> ooh, buddy, uh, Jets, in, Jets in a bad place right now. Zach Wilson on the road against the Cowboys team that won 40 and nothing. Me, Giants, 40 and nothing, Bear. Who you got in this situation? I'm going to take the Jets plus the nine and a half because I think we saw Monday night that the Jets defense is one of the elite units in the league. Now, Dallas's defense is also one of the elite units in the league, and I would assume we're going to see at least one turnover from Zach Wilson, but I think the Jets' defense can give Dak Prescott and that Cowboys offense problem. I, I don't think it'll be easy to run on the Jets' defense. I, I think the Jets' secondary will confuse and give Dak Prescott problems. I had three, three turners from Josh Allen the other night. And they've done a great job keeping him in check, so like, Dallas only had 265 yards in that game against yeah. the Giants. They had two non-offensive touchdowns, so it wasn't like this... this Offense was going up and down the field on on a bad Giants team. So now you face a really good defense. And I just think it's awful what happened to to Aaron Rodgers. And we kind of forecast it last week when I talked about how I was I I had been more optimistic and more excited about this Jet season than I had been in a long, long time. And I said, Oh, by the way, that was 1999 when Vinny Testaverde tore his Achilles in early in the game against the England, and the rest is history. And unfortunately, it happened again. But I think there's a little bit of uh, an overreaction in this line because I think it was three and a half, maybe going in going into the into week one. Yeah. Or, and, and look ahead, and now you're getting close to ten. Yep. Like you know, maybe the maybe Wilson does implode against Parsons in that pass rush. But, but at the same time, I, it would not surprise me at all to see this game be 17-13 going yeah. into the fourth quarter, and, and the Jets are, are right in it just because of how good Hall and Cook ran on, on Monday night and how good that defense is. And I think the de- what I'm concerned about with this, the Jets are is if you're a member of the defense and you're in a 17-13 yeah. game every week and you're losing games – 14 9 like at some point is there going to be a mutiny in that locker room because there was last year there was last year because zach wilson did not take blame for his responsibility right i mean players understand if guys are going to play bad but then they just want us to say like hey man i played bad like sorry like my fault zach wilson was like no not my fault and everyone (laughs) got upset with him there um i the thing about nine and a half points, as you mentioned, it's a lot of points. It's a lot of points. I mean, think about all the outcome. 24-17. Would, would that surprise you no. the final score? Like, I think that's why you take the points in situation. The thing about defense is interesting. So I've always felt that defense has a tougher time being good through 60 minutes when the offense doesn't help versus vice versa, right? Like our job on offense is to score, score, score. Mm-hmm. So we're fine just continuing to score. Yeah, it stinks when your defense allows. 
32 points, you got to score 35. It's tough on defense when your offense can't give you anything. And I always worry about in these games, you know, it's 17, 10 Cowboys. Um, you know, there's three minutes left in the game. And the defense is just gassed. They're tired. And the Cowboys just bust out a long run and I'm covering the game, but nine and a half is a ton of points. I, I think I'm with you here with the jets. Let's get to your last game of the week here. Divisional matchup, Baltimore Ravens, uh, one and zero off a win against the, the Texans. That was the number was bigger than the game actually yes. played. Uh, they're on the road at Cincinnati, Cincinnati favored by three and a half year total 46 and a half bagels looked bad last weekend, losing to the Browns, but maybe weather was involved. Burrow coming back off injury. They started slow last season as well who you got here i'm i'm gonna lay the points with cincinnati here yeah. i'm gonna lay the three the, the three three and a half here uh baltimore just i'm not sure that lamar is gonna work what everybody how everybody thinks he's gonna work in this offense like i, I didn't think he was as much of a runner as maybe he should be i'm not sold on the wide receiver core dobbins being out i think is is a big loss yeah. for them and, and I think it's more of a play on the Bengals, on this spot, on this team, who you just kind of have to trust here, that team that's had incredible success the last couple of years, whether some of it's been in close games, maybe they've had a lot of injury luck as well, and they fall into a, right, a, a lot of right situations. But Burrow didn't play the entire offseat, the entire exhibition preseason. I, 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 we're not supposed to call it exhibition. That's, I just remembered that preseason football, not, not training exhibition, camp. Yeah, training camp. There you so, go. so Burrow was gone. The, of course he was going to be a little rusty. Of course the offensive line was going to struggle with him back there. So I, I will just lay the three and a yeah. half here with Cincinnati and, and and take my chance. If the Bengals happen to, to lose at home, I'm also holding on to a little Bengals to miss the playoff ticket, which is in a Bengals season win total under. But I think this is a good an opportunity to, to – to get maybe a little bit of a reduced number on a team that lost last week and maybe the market might be a little more down on than they should be. Bear Bets full episodes drop twice a week right here on the Bear Bets YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to stay ahead of the odds and let's celebrate all of our wins together.